It's important, I think, for you to ponder PSATs, right? But not to overthink it. Try to get through this quickly, and then you'll take a book with you. It is the reality that a week from tomorrow, you'll go to the gym and you'll spend some time taking PSATs. What are PSATs? It's just a scrimmage for the SAT, right? You will have the experience of an SAT. You'll sit at a table in the whole gymnasium with number two pencils. Flies will die on your table, right? You'll make your way through sections covering three areas. But unlike the SATs, this does not affect your future. The only way anybody's going to know outside of the school what you got on these scores is if you do really well. If you're a junior and you do really well, it can be good for you. You can be honored, right, as a, by the National Merit Scholarship Corporation. So that's, that's what this is about. We, hey, it's Alex. Alex, it's you. We played basketball together. <laughs> I don't know why the college board is promoting her, but. Uh, so the benefit of this thing? The benefit of this is that it is a scrimmage, and you get to see the game film. So unlike the SATs, you take this thing, and in December, you get it back. Right? You get a full run with scores and questions, so you can figure out what you don't know. It's the best feedback you'll get from a standardized test ever. So that's, that's an upside. Uh, so the three, I think you probably know the three kinds, the three types of questions that you get. And it's the same on SATs. You get critical reading, right? You read a passage and answer questions. You get math, and this goes up into a little bit of algebra too, but that's about it. SATs are a little harder in that sense. And then writing skills, you don't actually write. Right? It's a grammar test. So writing skills. So that's what you got. Uh, a lot of non-fiction on it. This gives you a, a sense of what you have. I, I'll try to move quickly through the... Uh, through these slides. You do get some stats and probability. It's pretty easy, but some of you might not have seen that. So if you haven't, there are practice booklets that you'll get. And if you actually want to do well, you want to do some math sections and see what they're like. I'd say particularly the math is what you want to practice if you want to do well on this thing. Uh, we'll get to the writing skills questions. So this compares PSAT and SAT. Right? It's the same evil machine, the college board. Right? They run the PSATs, SATs, the SAT subject tests, your AP exams, they're all by this, this college board, this not-for-profit machine that really dictates a lot of your future at, relative to, the, to college. So you got to learn how to deal with this. It lies before you if you want to go to college. There's no avoiding it. So SAT is almost four hours long. PSAT is closer to two hours. So it will take longer than that because you have to fill out all kinds of bubble sheety stuff. Uh, so that's what you got there. Oh, you're big. He decided to come to school here like three weeks ago. Now we're good. All right. So now we get to play along and do some sample questions. If you're interested and you want to move to the front and yell out the correct answers, feel free to change your seat. <laughs> Roger, this is critical reading. Roger said the report was significant. Semicolon. Heather contradicted him, saying that all the information presented was. If we want to just guess, significant. Insignificant, insignificant would be a good try. <laughs> there are options. Wow. E. 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 On this sec anything that's not a full paragraph, the, sex the section goes from easier to harder. So if you're going to skip one, and you may, there are reasons to do that, probably if you're near the end of a section and you think you're going to get it wrong, you're right. Maybe <laughs> skip that one. Right? Uh, here's another type of critical reading. After I left the room, I began to sip my impressions. Only the day before, an acquaintance had warned me to watch carefully for sleight of hand tricks, especially as the man had earlier been a stage conjurer. Ooh. The acquaintance mentioned in line two can best be described as... Co-worker? Co fits the part of speech category. 
It sounds to me like you definitely should grab a booklet on the way out and practice this. Alright, can do a little math. The most important thing you'll hear tonight is in 2 minutes and 48 seconds. So get your iPhone out and get that timer going. Uh, Ooh, this is kind of hard. AX plus BX equals 36. What is the value of AX? Guys, we're done. There, will, there won't be yelling next Wednesday in the gym. But, so enjoy it while you can. I gotta confess. I did this one, and it took me like five minutes. I think I belong in Skeletor. So, here's, it's now in 2 minutes and 45 seconds. Fear this. Fear the gritty. Right? You can screw this up. And out of the college board knows that you can screw it up. They know that you do screw it up. But here it remains. So, you need to practice the, the gritty responses. You can't use, is it called mixed numbers? When you have a number and then a fraction? You can't do mixed numbers in here or, you know, God in the college board will punish you. So, beware of the gridians. I think we got a couple more slides on them. Yeah, and you'll see, I'll kind of go quickly through this. And it's the second one here, right? You look up high, it's two and a third, but you can't write two and a third on here. Or you'll be wrong, right? And you'll lose a point. We don't lose a point, we lose a quarter point. Alright, uh, on we go. We're getting there. <laughs> Charlie! <laughs> Take it it's out. Just, Take it it's out. Take it out. Take it out. Take it out. I like this slide. The calculators are encouraged. Good. They, one of two things is going to happen with you a week from Wednesday. One, ah, I forgot my calculator. And we're going to say, tough, do it without. Right? Or, even worse, like an hour in, you're going to be like, oh no, my calculator just died. <laughs> so, maybe re-battery that thing. If you're into this, right? If this is a varsity game for you, fresh batteries. Okay, so calculators are encouraged. And I think you know this, like you can't, you can't use your phone, right? You can't use your sister's junior high calculator. Use the TI... 982, right? That's the one you want. Writing skills. Ooh, another question, CJ. Ready for this one? What? No. Yeah. So you're going to pick the best replacement. A few barges still move oil up to Hartford, but in the old days, they had more traffic then. If you can go with that for A, but we know that A's not right. Nick Connor is like, choose the shortest one. Right? Yeah. Well, let's see. Let's see how you do. Hey! Often this is the way to go on these, right? College board likes brevity. Jack, write this down. Uh, I think this is our last audience participation, so enjoy it. The electric, the electronic computer is a technological trend that scientists have developed, mastered, and then put it to constantly increasing use. B. B. Yeah, B. right. B. B. Yeah. B. Good. Oh, do we get one more? You know what? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll only note this. Ben, these are like, that looks like a paragraph. I bet in that section, the questions don't get increasingly more difficult. Correct. Correct. And thank you for noting that here, right? That's worth remembering. It's a paragraph called the Ben rule, if you want. You're not going to get harder. Uh, this, if you don't know this, this math makes sense. It's going to go away in a couple of years. I think it has on the AP exams. But the way this thing is scored, five options, right? It's a college board, A, B, C, D, E, E. So if you get a question right, you get a point. Get a question wrong, you lose a quarter of a point. So what the college board is figuring is over the course of guessing, right? If you guess, you get one, two, three, four, wrong for a point, and you get one right for a point. So it's a wash, and you don't really win. So you can 
Devise your guessing strategies accordingly. Some people will say, if you can get one out of the way that you know is wrong, or two out of the way, then give it a guess. I'd say, again, practice and see, how, see what your success rate is if and when you guess. But that, that math, like, it's, worth, it's worth knowing that. <laughs> Note that the grid is, right? You're either right or wrong. Credit or credit. Really to blank. If you leave it blank, you get nothing. You're not docked anything, so you don't lose a quarter of a point, but you don't gain anything. So you could not do the whole thing. I think you get a 200. Yes. Yeah, or 20. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually. So you see, when we sit again in December and you get your test back, you're going to get a score that looks like an SAT score divided by 10. Right? Perfect SAT score is 100. Perfect PSAT score is 80. Uh, <laughs> it's not even here. <laughs> College board. Uh, so this, here's some advice. In the next eight days, how are you going to get ready for this test? Read. Take challenging courses. Let me add, pray. Right? You got a chapter. Uh, How'd I do? What time, what time is it? Alright. Hey, just be quiet for, for 30 seconds. Totally quiet. Shush, shush, shush. Uh, we're all made it. You have to be quiet. I, I appreciate almost everyone being good. I know that this is painful. So, as you leave, oh, you want to grab one of these, and if your roommate is in the play, you might be like, hey, I'm going to totally hook up my roommate and be thoughtful. Oh, zoom in for the close-up. Thanks, go in peace to love and serve.